my creative scoop and I'm back with another card making tutorial for Sunny Studio Stamps. Today we're going to be making this adorable card using the Pegasus stamp set and also some cloud dies and scallop border dies. Lots of fun things. We're going to be doing some Distress Oxide and Copic coloring. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create our rainbow clouds in the background. So I'm taking two of the fluffy cloud border dies and I'm going to take this scratch piece of paper and we're going to die cut one side with one and the other side with the other. So that way we can use this piece of scratch cardstock as a stencil to create our clouds. So then directly on our card base, we're going to go ahead and start by placing our cardstock, our scratch cardstock with the clouds on it towards the top and we're going to start with picked raspberry so that way we don't smudge any of it by putting the piece of cardstock over so we could just move the, the piece of cardstock down to create our clouds and we can flip it around in between each one so that way we have different shaped clouds in each different line. So you're going to want to either have a piece of paper towel near you or the microfiber cloth so that way every time we use one color you want to take the the cardstock with the clouds on it that we're using and you want to wipe it off so that way you're not pulling any of the previous color onto the color the next color that we're going to be using so you just want to kind of wipe it down a little bit to prevent that from happening so each cloud has a different shade so we'll go ahead and start with the small side first get our distress oxide out get it nice and inked up our brush I'm gonna put this to the side so you can see what I'm doing so you're gonna want to go in a circular motion and you don't want to come up very high you want to make sure there's white in between let me show you the sample card again so that way you have that white cloud right above so it's just basically the shadow of underneath the cloud that is gonna be the rainbow so I'm gonna start on my scratch paper first and I'm gonna come up just a little bit and then you want to you don't want to press as hard as you're moving on to the card base so that way it has that softer look right along the edge and you don't see any of those lines and it smooths out into the white of the card base you can come up a little higher depending on how much color you want, but since this is the edge of the card, I'm going to come up a little bit higher. So we're going to remove that and you have your pink shade of the clouds. So then we're going to set this aside. So once we are finished with it, I'm going to get my microfiber cloth and just press really firmly a couple of times so that way we can remove some of that excess color that's just right there on top to prevent it from mixing and we're actually gonna flip this over. We're gonna do the same thing with the dried marigold. Get it nice and inked up. And then I'm gonna come at the side again so you can see the angle. And again, straight on the card base, the, the, the die that we cut out on our, the part we're using as our stencil. And we're gonna come up a little bit higher So I'm barely pressing on the brush so that way I can really control that ink and not have it spread out so far so I don't kind of go overboard so you can keep that white right at the top. And again, we're gonna set this color to the side, wipe off the excess orange. And let's go ahead and do the yellow. So since the orange is closer to yellow than the pink, we're gonna go ahead and use that same side just in case any of it happens to kind of transfer over. So I'm gonna use my squeezed lemonade, ink this up. And since we are using the same clouds, I'm just gonna move it over a little bit so it has a different shape and 
and barely press all the way across so that way we have our yellow. So now we're going to go ahead and do the green. So I'm going to be using the cracked pistachio. And let's go ahead and use the small one this time. Get it nice and inked up. And we have our green. So then we'll set this one aside and we're gonna use peacock feathers next. We'll go ahead, which one did we use? The pink side. So now let's go ahead and use this one. And I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. I always like to cut a larger strip if when I, if I'm doing this so that way I can just kind of shift it over just so it's not so repetitive with the shapes. Let's get my blender brush. Ink that up with my peacock feathers. So since this color is darker, I am going over most of the scratch paper at first so I could slowly gradually bring up that teal color without having so much of it down since it is a lot darker. There we go and then we're gonna go ahead and do the purple the shaded lilac. So let's go ahead and put this aside. Let's wipe off our scratch paper, the stencil that we're using. don't think I have any cloud stencils. Cloud stencils are great if you have them, but if you don't, this is always a great way. Just get out your border dies and you could create these different blending backgrounds on your card bases. So now we got our purple out and we used the large one before, so I'm gonna flip it to the smaller one this time and we're gonna use the shaded lilac. Get it nice and inked up on our brush. Let's see how much room I have left. Oops, that's not good. Let's go ahead, let's come down a little bit more. So that way it covers it up. there we go. So now let's go ahead, same thing, and then we're going to get out the sponge sugar so we can do the light pink. So we have our sponge sugar and we use the small one, This so we're going to use the large one this time. And we have our light pink, which got a little bit of green into it. 
but it's still a lot lighter than the bright pink up there. Let's add a little bit more. There we go. So now we are ready to create the rest of our card. So we need to die cut these border, this scalloped border here. All right, so I've cut out two of my scallop borders so that way we can overlap them and put them on our card and it'll give it a little bit more dimension. So we're gonna layer these and set them to dry. And now we can go ahead and get started coloring on our little Pegasus. Okay, so I've stamped my image in Memento black ink and I've stamped it onto my Copic Express It blending card. And we're gonna be using our Copic markers to color. So for the body of the Pegasus, we're gonna be using N5, N3, N1, and N0. We're gonna start with N3 because we want him to be white, so we just wanna give him a shadow. So you don't want to start with the darkest color because then sometimes you have a tendency of going overboard and it making it too dark. So we're going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath the wings. And underneath these hair strands. Underneath the face. Underneath the, the his mouth and his chin. Her mouth or, yeah, we'll say her on the back of this ear, in between the leg, these legs, but basically on the bottom part of this leg since it's underneath, underneath of this one. So these are all where the shadows basically just make sense. So all underneath here, on the inside part of this leg, and on the bottom of this one, and right back here on his little bum, since the tail is kind of covering that, that's gonna leave a shadow. We also wanna add a little bit of a shadow underneath the hair up here. So now we're gonna use our N1 just to bring the color out a little bit. Like I said before, we're, we wanna leave this white. We want him just to be shadowed gray. So I'm just gonna add a little color, just flicking right along the edge of that N3, pulling up some of that N3 and just blurring out the harsh line between the two colors. So then we're gonna do the same thing. Oh, I gotta add a little bit more N1 over here. So we're gonna do the same thing with N0. This time I'm gonna do a heavier flick so that way it blends nicely into the white and I don't have to blend it out as much. It softens up that harsh edge and blends it nicely into the white of the paper. So now we're going to go ahead and take that N5. We're not going to go everywhere where we added the N3. We're just going to add a little bit more of a shadow and depth to certain areas just to make those shadows stand out a little bit more. So for example, right underneath the face in between the hair, since this is such a small area right here, we really want to define the shadow so it looks like his face is kind of tilted and covering part of the neck. So I'm just going to basically outline the outline of the stamp thickening up that line. And a little bit of color really goes a long way here to make it really stand out and pop. I'm also going to add a little bit more of a shadow right underneath the wings. And right in here. So you can tell too that I'm not even going out as far as what I did before with the N3. So right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace the outline. 
and let's go ahead and add a little bit more of a shadow right underneath the hair so that way we can really make that rainbow pattern really stand out. So then let's go ahead and skip N3 so that way we don't add too much color. We're gonna go straight to N1 to blur out wherever we've added that N5. This will help keep the amount of ink we lay down to a minimum and still we can blend it out that really darkness of that N5. I'm going to go back with my N0 just a little bit right here because I went a little thick. So now I'm going to take my R32 going to add a little bit of pink to the inside of the ear and we're going to go ahead, we're still going to make the wings white so we have to go back and do that whole thing and shadow them again. But since I wanted that to really point out the certain areas of the, sh of the shadows and where they most make sense, I wanted to leave the wings outside, you know, outside of that whole thing. So it makes a little bit more sense, so it doesn't look like I'm just shadowing all over the place. So I'm going to take my N3 again, and right where the wings are coming out, I'm just going to kind of flick these little lines, just deepening up those shadows. And then I'm also going to trace the these back part of the wings here, right behind these, so they look like two separate pieces. Or two separate sections of the wings. And then we're going to take the N1. I'm going to do a little flick just to pull out that color. And then the N0. And since the, they are the wings and there's not too many shadows to them and I don't really want to go overboard, we're just going to cut it off there and we're not going to go back over it with the N3. So now for the hair, we're going to be coloring in a rainbow. Since it, there's not a lot of room there, we're only going to be using one color, one shade per color. So just like how we did our rainbow background, we're going to be using the R32 as our red. And then we're going to be using YR04, and then Y02, YG13, B12, V12, and R81. So those are our rainbow colors that are pretty close to the colors that we have on our background, minus that tealish color, because I wanted the blue to be in here. So we're going to start with our R32. We're going to add a little bit of color along the back part. So the part closest to the uh, Pegasus, we want that part, the part that's coming out of the his hair, head, to be the, the red color. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of color right along here and then also on the tail. And then I'm going to take my YR04 and come out a little bit right where we left off with that R32. Now the orange is a little bit more powering than that R32, so we are going to go back over and push out a little bit more of the pink. So I'm just going to go right back over exactly where I've left off, but I'm also going to be going into some of that orange. So that way the color blends out and it creates that rainbow without having the harsh lines. Then we're going to go ahead and take the Y02 and do the same thing. We're going to go over it a couple of times, really work that color through so we can have a nice blend between those rainbow shades. And 
And we're gonna go back with our orange. I'm gonna do a heavy flick so it softens up that harsh line in between the orange and the yellow. And then I'm gonna go back with my white O2 into some of that orange to pull it through so we have a, a little bit better of a blend. And now the green. I'm gonna be using the YG13. And I'm going, I'm flicking in towards the yellow, but I'm also gonna be flicking down because for some reason that yellow is always so much lighter and it has a hard time blending in with the orange and with the green. So we gotta really work that color through. So we're gonna go back with the YO2. Get rid of that harsh green line that we have there. And now the B12. And then we have to go back with some of that green again. So we want to flick the green into the blue. So we get that better transition. You might have to touch up your yellow again. Cause that yellow is just kind of a pain. So now let's go ahead and take that V12 for the purple. Come right along the side of the purple, of the blue. You want to make sure you go back into some of that blue so we blend that color out. And then we'll have to go back with the B12 so we can get a nice blend along in between the purple and the, I went way overboard with that one, purple and the blue. Let me fix this. And then our the R81. Wrong end. So I'm gonna actually start at the edge of wherever we have left of the hair and I'm gonna fill it all in. That way I'm pushing some of that pink into that purple and get that nice blend so that way I have more pink instead of dragging out the purple. So there we have it, our rainbow hair. She's all ready to be cut out with the coordinating die so we can place it on our card. Okay, so we're gonna come back to our bordered scallop border piece and put some adhesive on the back and glue it straight to the middle of our card. Right in the middle of the clouds. I prefer to use liquid adhesive so that way I have that quick minute to shift it and get it nice and even. So since our card base is pretty flat still, we don't have a whole lot of stuff, we're going to use our Misty to stamp our sentiment. So we'll go ahead and place the card inside our Misty. So I can line up the sentiment. We're gonna be using the Spring Showers, You Brighten My Day. So the these are all different stamps. So the U is a different stamp, the Brighten is a different stamp, and the My Day is a different stamp. Well, instead of doing the U first and then trying to line up the, bright, the Brighten and then the My Day, I'm gonna first add the Brighten so that way I can really get close with my U and My Day when I place it on my card. So you just wanna get an idea of where you are gonna put your Pegasus. So that way you can go right where you want, it. you wanna make sure you, want, you have enough room. So if you don't really want your Pegasus sticking off of the card at all, I think mine is just a hair with his tail. 
And then I'm gonna push that over just a little bit, make sure it's straight. We're gonna remove that, push down, and get our memento black ink. So we're gonna ink, ink it all up. And I like to do it a couple of times just so I really get it nice and dark. And now we can remove this and get out the U and the My Day and line it up and restamp it again. So I've placed them where I want them on my card. And now let's ink them up. And we'll ink them up again. And one more time. And now we are ready to add our Pegasus and all the little iridescent pastel sequins onto our card. All right, so here is the card that we just created and the sample that I had created before. Super fun, super cute, very simple, but they really, really pop. So I really hope you enjoyed this card tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.